Joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, man, it's going to be taking part in the UMAF National Championships come here on May 26th through the 28th event that you can watch on flowcombat.com. It is Billy Swanson. Billy, as always, man, I appreciate the time. Uh, you know, first off, in terms of preparing for this national tournament, what is, what is the hardest part about the preparations for this? Um. I'd say the hardest part for most people is going to be the weight cut. Um, you know, a lot of people cut weight differently. Some people fight five pounds from their body, you know, what they naturally walk at. Some people try and fight 30 pounds. So, um, I mean, for me, I, I, I've not really, you know, struggled as far as the weight cut goes. I, I keep my weight, you know, pretty, pretty well down when I'm in my fight camp. And, uh, but I, I, I think a lot of those guys who fight at like 55 and all that, that's where they're really going to struggle with this tournament. How do you prepare in terms of, you know, making sure your, your body's going to be peak performance, whether it's the 26th, 27th or the 28th. I mean, how, how do you, is it just, uh, making sure you're just, you know, putting the right things into your body? Well, yeah, I mean, your, your body is a temple. So, I mean, I mean, Obviously, if you treat it right, it's going to reward you. So, uh, I mean, eating junk and all that really isn't going to help you with. Uh, it's not going to help you with, uh, you know, with what you want to get out of it. I mean, so I, I, I want my body to, uh, you know, be at the highest level that it can be. So, I mean, obviously, I, I fuel it with the best nutrition. I had a chance to talk to Mike Thomas recently, and he said to me, he said, he goes, look, me and Billy are the ones essentially saying you have the targets on each other's back that it's going to be one of the, either one of you guys are going to walk out as, uh, you know, with the national championship here and head to internationals. Uh, is it, Do you look at Mike as your toughest competition? Um. Well, honestly, you know, and, and, and you know, this is probably going to be taken the wrong way, and I'm going to be called uh, – overly arrogant but um you know I, I don't walk into a fight feeling like uh like the person that i'm fighting really has a chance in hell so to say um so i mean i i, I, I have full confidence in my skills and my training partners and uh, my coaching and honestly i i don't think there's anyone that i can't finish and uh i mean obviously you know i, I i'm not the best in the world currently but um i mean I, I think you give me four years i mean i could be up there and um i mean I, i'm just all this is is conor mcgregor was a nobody at, at one point so i mean this is just my progression to the top but isn't that the mentality you're supposed to have to think that you're the baddest dude alive and, and that no one can can beat you i mean i don't personally i don't see an issue i mean maybe your competitors would see an issue with that because Maybe they think you're overlooking them, but for me, just as as a reporter, I don't I don't see any issues with that. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, different people, like I said, take it different ways. They say you got to walk humbly, but I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, if the way I believe, if if I was uh, at any point doubting myself, giving someone too much credit, then at, at at that time, you know, I could I could watch Mike Thomas so say and be like, oh well, he's got really really good hands and. Uh, you know, I, I better watch out for that. And then I might get out there, and, I mean, his hands are not all they were cracked up to be. It was just, I mean, he was able to showcase them against a lesser opponent. And um, so, I mean, I, I really, I, I don't see the problem. I, I have complete confidence in myself. I, I never step into the cage feeling like I'm going to lose. Honestly, you know, there's a lot of people who fight because, uh, you know, it's a it's a different outlet, like you know, say a high level jujitsu guy. Oh, well, I should go fight. But no, honestly, I feel like I was made to do this. I mean, I'm 265 pounds. I, I I'm fast as a 160 pounder. I'm very flexible. Uh, I mean, I can throw head kicks. I can grapple with the best. I mean, so confidence is is nothing that I I've ever lacked. And, you know, obviously you're going through this this process with, with UMAF. And once this entire process is over, is it simply that, that you'll you'll 
figure there's nothing else left to accomplish in the amateur ranks and you'll go pro? Uh, I mean, pretty much, man. Actually, uh, kind of something that's kind of got me a little upset about this UMAP tournament is uh, my weight class was overly full um, before they released the names, and then they released the names, and uh, a lot, like, several people have pulled out. And, uh, I mean, personally, I feel like there's a lot of amateur heavyweights that are around that are uh, ducking and dodging me and waiting on me to go pro. So, I mean, uh, the game plan is, is if I win the UMass, not, well, when I win the UMass National Tournament next weekend, um, I'm going to end up, I'm going to stay amateur until I get the opportunity to go overseas and represent Team USA and uh, compete overseas in the IMAF Worlds. Um, if off uh, if I have an off night and I I end up you know getting beat, then I'll not look to have maybe one two more amateur fights before I go professional. But uh, me and David Robbins, my coach, are uh, on kind of the same game plan and time frame on when we're both gonna you know make our burst into the professional scene. And uh, I think you could definitely look for uh, both of us to be doing that by March of next year for sure. Why do you think people don't want to fight you? Um, I mean, people see my wrestling capabilities. I mean, it's it's kind of awesome. You know, it's a blessing in disguise. I only wrestled one year in college. And, uh, I mean, it wasn't at, you know, like Iowa State or anything like that. It was at King College. Um, and I don't have this big, ample amount of credentials, but, I mean, I, I know how to wrestle, and I'm I'm very good at what I do. I'm a big guy who can – I mean, like I said, I'm very flexible. I'm very quick, and uh, I'm very good at scrambling. And so they see my grappling capability, and a lot of people can't stop that. Um, ben Rowland, he was uh, a terror, and there was people running from him uh, before he went professional. And I was his last amateur fight. He was 6-0. and I was actually coming off of uh, the only loss that I'd had um, to Denzel Freeman. And uh, everybody said I was going to get beat by Ben. And then I stepped out there and uh, to quote the commentators, um, they said right after the first round, you mentioned we've never seen Ben Rowland controlled like this. Uh, or we've never seen Ben Rowland take it down like this. We've, we've actually never seen Ben Rowland controlled like this in a round. And I don't know. I mean, a lot, a lot of people see my grappling capability and they, they know that their only chance is to knock me out on our feet and, I mean, I, I'm, if you get close enough to punch me, I'm close enough to take you down. But I've also been working on striking, so I'm looking to surprise some people at the UMAP tournament as well. And, of course, this event going to be on Flow Combat. You can watch Billy uh, as he tries to represent Team USA here at the UMAP uh, Championships. Of course, this is the National Championships. Billy, I appreciate the time. Uh, good luck here next week. All right. Thank you, buddy.